Hello everyone, this is Bagrisham. Today I'm going to show you a gaming PC build for $600. This is going to be a great way to get started with all the new PC games coming out, such as Battlefield 4, Batman Arkham Origins, and Assassin's Creed Black Flag, as well as some older games like Crisis 3, Bioshock Infinite, and yes, it plays Minesweeper. These games should be playable with no problem at 1080p, but you may need to lower your settings to high for a few of the brand new games, like Battlefield 4. But this system should be able to handle just about everything that's come out of the PC so far, and on good quality settings. So without further ado, let's get started with the build. For the processor, I chose the AMD FX6300. This is a 6-core processor clocked at 3.5GHz, and it's actually very easily overclockable. I chose this processor over my usual choice of the cheaper AMD Athlon, mainly because this is a 6-core processor that's recommended for Battlefield 4. More games in the future will be moving up to 6 cores, so this is an excellent processor to get started with. But if you want a build to be cheaper and you don't really care about Battlefield 4, you can always go with the Athlon. I'll leave a link in the description for you if you want to go that route. The FX6300 will run you about $110. For a motherboard, I chose the MSI 970A G43. This is a great motherboard for this build, and it supports the processor. It has two USB 3 ports, six USB 2 ports, and overall just is a great solid motherboard, and it's only about $60. For the graphics card, I chose a Gigabyte Radeon R7-270X. With AMD's recent release of the R9 series, I thought it would be a good addition for a $200 graphics card. Based on some benchmarks, a baseline R9-270X should yield at least 40 frames per second on Ultra at 1080p playing Battlefield 4. This card is excellent for the build, and for all you NVIDIA fans, it's on par with the performance of a GTX 760. For memory, I went with two 4GB sticks of G-Skills Ripjaws X-Series DDR3 RAM. It's rated at 2133 MHz, which is excellent considering the price of this RAM. You can get two 4GB sticks for only $60. As RAM prices have been rising for the past six months, the fact that you can get it for $10 off the regular price is a great little bonus, and that's why I went with it. For a hard drive, I'm going with the 1TB Western Digital Caviar Blue. A terabyte is plenty of space for all your games, movies, pictures, music, and it should be a great fit for all your storage needs. You can choose to go with the Caviar Black if you want a bit faster performance for an extra $20, but keep in mind that the difference is not that big between the two, and they both have a terabyte of storage. But the Caviar Black is optimized for performance at the expense of power consumption and a bit more noise, while the Caviar Blue is the basic hard drive. It's your build, so do whatever you want with it. The power supply is the most important part of any of my builds, because without the power, all this stuff is is a big pile of shiny metal. Remember to not be cheap with the power supply, because it runs everything, so if you pick quality over sale price, you're going to get a much better system. My recommendation is the Corsair CX 500 watt power supply. It's an 80 plus bronze certified power supply, which means it's got high quality power and it'll help lower the power bill. You can get this for around $50. The optical drive in this PC is really irrelevant. Mostly, unless you use CDs, the only thing you're going to be using it for is to install the OS. I just got the cheap, reliable reader and burner, which is a light on. It will run you about $17, and it's simple and basic. Finally is the case. Now this is where personal opinion or general cheapness comes in. This case can be either your pride and joy, or it can just be something you put all your stuff in and you put it under your desk and forget about it. To keep builds moderately cheaper, I went with the NZXT Gamma Classic case. This case is actually one of my favorite cases, as it's simple, yet a bit stylish, and it holds everything together with good airflow. I actually have this case on my main computer, and it really does look great in terms of a cheap case. Yes, you could do better if you're willing to spend more, but if you just want a case, it's perfect for size and airflow. Flow. It even has space for a water cooler, which you don't see often in cheap cases. And I've had it for a few years without any problems, so I highly recommend it. You can get this case for about $30. There you go guys, it's a great $600 build that should last a while in terms of specs, and you should be able to run just about anything you throw at it. Now the prices of these do change often, so I'll be leaving a link in the description to PCPartPicker.com, a website that you can use to make your PC build online and see the lowest prices from all the different websites you can get your components from. Since it's November and Christmas is right around the corner, I'll be making another video for when the major deals come out for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. That's it guys, so if you like this video and you want to see more of them, click the like button. And if you enjoy my videos, click here to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out and it lets me know that you want to see more builds. That's it, so I'll see you in my next video.